on my hips, boy. Feel you on my hips, boy. Hey, family, welcome or welcome so back. Um, in today's video, we're going to talk about things that you should not be doing with your locks. So, this video is really great for those who are planning to start your journey or have already started and is very new to the journey. So, um, hopefully, this video helps. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe down below by hitting that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell just so that you can get notified every time I make an upload. Now, I apologize if there's any, you know, background noises, but hopefully there, you know, you can hear me and everything's great. Okay, so let's get into this video. So the first thing is never retwist your hair dry or, you know, style your hair dry under no circumstances. So that also means twirling your locks. I know that when we first start our journey, we tend to like, you know, want to keep the locks neat. So we will kind of twirl it or just want to play with your hair. Keep your hands out your head, please, 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 because you will end up doing it if you just seem like, you know, you can't uh, resist not touching your hair. So retwisting your hair dry or twirling your hair dry is not something that you should do because later on it can cause damage and breakage. Um, you want to always make sure your hair is damped if you are retwisting at all times. There's never a time that you retwist your hair dry. The second thing is stop doing experiments on your locks. Now on YouTube, there are a bunch of people doing different things with their locks, which is totally fine, but there are some things that you should not be doing. And there are some people who would say, hey, let me put laundry detergent on my locks and add some peppermint oil, some rosemary oil, just so that, you know, I can balance out the bad and, you know, kind of make it somewhat good. No, that's not gonna work. Laundry detergent is for laundry and it's not for your locks. Um, you know, to each his own though, to each his own. I'm not here to, to like bash anyone who does stuff like that, but I don't think it's very logical and you know, it's laundry detergent. You just have to kind of prepare yourself if your hair ends up reacting in a certain way, especially your scalp. You want to pay attention to your scalp because your scalp is very, very important. You want to make sure your scalp is moisturized at all times and you want to make sure your scalp is healthy and clean, but you don't want to use laundry detergent to make it clean. So just stop. Okay. All right. The third thing is stop trimming your frizzy hair. I see a lot of people actually doing this and it's not something that you should do only because you don't know what part of your locks are keeping intact like you don't know what hairs are keeping your locks together and since the hairs that you started with are slowly diminishing as you you know um, trim your your frizzy hair it's going to get thinner and thinner over time you're not gonna see it now you're not gonna see it next month but you will see it over time it will gradually get really thin sometimes you know we may have more fridge than we want to have but it's a part of the process and it's also a part of your hair texture next thing you should stop doing is listen to people who tell you to wait two to three months to wash your locks this is not a thing that you should be doing no one should be waiting two to three months to wash your scalp wash your hair what have you you're not supposed to be waiting that long period so anyone who advises you to do that you should run because they are telling you wrong information your scalp is supposed to be clean and how is your scalp going to be clean if you don't wash it in two to three months it's not possible and that will lead to other things that you will definitely have to worry about i also made a video on this topic because someone actually did email and write me on my instagram about this whole issue and i just find it very ridiculous for anyone to be waiting for that long um, regardless of what you're trying to do you should not be having your hair just there um, without any water and soap but that's just my opinion um, in order for your hair to grow healthy you have to have a clean scalp and there's no way to achieve that if your scalp is not being washed for two to three months so the next thing you should not be doing is wearing the same style for a long period of time especially updos if you tie your hair up for a long period of time then you will put a lot of tension on your scalp which will lead to breaking of the edges and also um, you know breaking of the hair so you want to pay attention to how long you have your style in and how often you do it sometimes you know you, we might think okay well um 
my edges are good or my hair is good I'm just going to you know put my hair in a ponytail and it's like an everyday thing over time your hairline will recede and over time you will see a change in your hairline or your locks um, especially like if you're using rubber bands or any type of stretchy thing to hold your hair um, that will actually cause your hair to kind of thin out and you might find that some of your locks are actually thin in certain areas and it could be because you might rock a lot of buns you might rock a lot of ponytails a lot of updos bobby pins all of these should definitely um, be in consideration when you are styling your locks I'm not someone who styles my locks all the time because I can't and I just won't do updos long for me I just don't I just don't do it because I am tender-headed I honestly don't wear a lot of updos and hairstyles and barrel styles and this and that they all look so pretty but I mean I just don't do it because I have tender head and yeah so you only see from me a nice little bun a top knot you know curls uh, my hair down and stuff like that and also you want to be careful on how often you style your locks and you know wearing updos and things like that because you can uh, get alopecia which is uh, basically hair loss and you know it's very difficult for you to kind of get your hair back once you have alopecia of course you can it's possible but depending on how severe it is and stuff like that so you just want to kind of use that as a precaution when you do have locks or just any style even if you have loose natural hair all of this plays a part on the tension it has on your scalp and your hair so the next thing is every DIY is not made for people with locks so you might see DIYs on YouTube with loose naturals and stuff like that all of that does not work for us um, unfortunately um, the way that our hair is or how our hair is made up we just can't just we can't put anything in our hair and um, you know there are DIYs that has things with eggs and mayo and you know olive oil and this and that um, these things are not the best things to ever put in your locks because you don't know if it's going to penetrate in and not come out or what have you so you kind of want to be careful on what exactly you put on your hair you want to use water soluble um, products and you want to kind of use light products so that your locks are not weighed down and causing later damage the next thing is you don't want to neglect your locks a lot of us think okay I'm going to get locks I don't have to do too much all I have to do is just you know put my hair in twists or comb coils or what have you and boom I have locks I am free I'm good no you have to have a routine for your locks you want to make sure your locks are moisturized and and clean and you want to kind of build a routine of you actually maintaining your locks this includes retwisting time and your washing time, your, uh, you know, your oiling your scalp time, like all of that plays a part. So um, you want to build a routine specifically for your locks so that you can take care of them and so that they can grow healthy. And, um, you know, if you plan on going to a loctician or somebody is doing your hair, you want to have a schedule on when you maintain your locks. And how often you do so now for me I actually retwist my hair every month and a half or sometimes every two months it depends on how I feel but usually it's around a month area um, no sooner than a month but you know um, sometimes I'll wait longer just just you know just cuz or just because I probably probably don't because I don't feel like it honestly <laughs> I don't feel like retwisting my hair because I'm the only one that does my hair just because you have locks does not mean that you're just going to completely neglect your hair and you don't have to worry about it mind you even if you have reform locks you still have to maintain your locks because you still have to moisturize your locks otherwise your locks will be brittled it will start thinning it will be very dry and it will start to break off so you kind of want to maintain that your locks is like a plant if you don't water them they will wilt the next thing is coloring your locks yourself 
This is something you don't want to do if you don't know what you're doing, okay? So especially if you're trying to achieve a lighter color than your hair color, you want to make sure you know what you're doing. Otherwise, I recommend that you go to a professional colorist that is actually experienced in locks. So not just someone who can color your locks or knows what coloring is or how to color, but someone who actually colors locks because the procedure is a little different. You need more dye for your locks than you know someone with loose natural hair. So all of this is important. Now, if you're trying to dye your locks and you're just dyeing it black, it's a lot safer to do so and easier to do so if you know, you're someone who's not very experienced in coloring. Um, I've done all my color of my locks, but I did make mistakes along the way. And my reason of actually sharing these things with you is so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. So I just suggest that if you want to color your locks, go to a professional, have it done professionally and just perfectly instead of you actually have to worry about the damage it does to your locks. You have to remember that dye, bleach, and all of that are very, very harsh chemicals for our hair. And just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean that your locks can hold out for it, you know? And it depends on how many times you've dyed your locks or dyed your hair. Um, all of this plays a part because your hair has a history. People will dive their locks over and over and over and over and over again and just think like, oh, you know, I can do this for however long I want because I have locks and my locks are unbreakable. This is the worst way to think because your locks can break off. And I'm sorry to tell you, but it can break off. And when it does, there's absolutely nothing you can do to undo the bleaching of your locks or the dyeing of your locks. Now you can repair, you can reattach, and you can do all these other things, but you want to take care of your locks the first time. The next thing is tying your locks in knots. So for example, if your locks are thinning out in a certain area, let's say the middle of your locks, and you don't wanna lose the length, a lot of people will actually put knots in their locks by just, you know, tying a knot and just pulling it um, and getting it to the spot to where the thinning area is. So the problem with that is that your locks will be very, very lumpy over time. And especially if you do this very often to all the locks that needs repair, um, this is not an effective way to repair your locks. You don't want to have bumpy locks and if you want to have smooth looking locks then you do want to repair your locks professionally or if you know how to crochet and you know use the lash hook then you can do that by yourself and you know um, get it done that way but there's different methods on how to repair your locks and um, I definitely would check out Curly New Growth's channel and she gives very great tips on how to do so and just tips in general because she is a loctician and she is well educated on the biology of hair and everything and I just love her. Definitely check out her videos because they are very informative um, but yeah besides that I just feel like it's not the best thing for your locks because your locks will look bumpy over time and the appearance of it doesn't look too good. But to each his own, I'm not judging anyone because I honestly used to do it too. But when I feel like I have a thinning area, honestly, I just snip my locks and call it a day. Um, I've been trimming my locks for for a while now and I usually do it every three months or so. So. Um, it is what it is, but I like to kind of groom my locks to make them look as, you know, good as possible. So besides that, let's go on to the next one. So the very last thing is being careless. Now, what I mean by this is like, you're just out here, yeah, I started my journey, blah, 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 blah. You over here rolling in sand and going through optical courses with mud and you just, you just don't care. I mean, you can do that. I'm not gonna knock you. You can do that, it's your hair, do what you gotta do. 
but you got to worry about getting all that junk out of your locks so especially if you went to the beach and you got sand all up in your hair because you were rolling in sand now i don't know if all of that's going to come out because it's a lot that's a lot of small specks and particles and grain that can just be stuck in your locks once your locks get wet and it's just a lot to deal with and you don't want to go through that trouble buildup can be from so many different things and ways remember why you started your lock journey and know that your journey is your very own you can't compare your lock journey with anyone else Regardless of how similar your hair might be to them, it's not going to be the same exact thing. Um, a lot of people kind of get very disappointed when their hair doesn't turn out the way that they may want based on somebody else's locks. You might look at my locks and you're like, wow, your locks are beautiful. I want locks like yours. The only way for you to have my locks is if you were Patrice. You are not Patrice, even if your name is Patrice, but you're not me that's why our locks are unique to us um, my hair texture my hair um, everything like how my hair curls up how thick it is all of that plays a part in how my locks look and a lot of people ask me about frizziness I don't personally deal with a lot of frizziness um, you can call me lucky but I don't deal with a lot of frizziness. So when it comes to managing frizziness, I don't really have a lot to say about it because I don't experience it. There are ways to handle frizziness and that could be palm rolling your locks, that could be covering your locks at night, it could be um, by brushing your locks, that would definitely help with frizziness, and just other things, even like, you know, wrapping the frizzy hair around your lock. Uh, gently and uh, yeah so that's definitely for another video hopefully you enjoy this video I want to thank you so much for watching if you have any questions please leave your questions down below and also if you want to add anything that you should not be doing with your locks comment down below and let everyone know what they shouldn't be doing with their locks if you've seen anything ridiculous on YouTube or in life or whatever that people are doing with their locks please share it down below also because girl it's a crazy world that we live in and look i'm no one to judge because i ain't god <laughs> i'll catch you guys tomorrow i mean not tomorrow i'll catch you guys when i see you guys again um always remember be spiffy and be you don't forget to subscribe to my channel okay right. um okay i'm out of here no seriously I i'm really i'm really leaving you guys all right thanks thanks for watching See y'all on the flip side, you know?